Okay, welcome to day two of CIM BC 22. We're here in Vancouver. This is Mining Now. I'm your host, Jared Downey. Okay, if you're talking about mining, uh, I think the conversation of communication is going to come up, um, I would say, three or four times at least in pretty much every episode. So we had to get the leader of communication on. We have Rogers Communications on. We have Paul Haworth and uh, uh, Jeffrey DeLeo, right? That's, it, That's right. correct. You, you got, got it. it. I knew it. And then just when I went to say it, I was like, wait a second. <laughs> um, so uh, let's let's start this just to sort of set it up. Can we start with with your titles um, and it's sort of what your roles are uh, at Rogers? Sure, sure. So first of all, thanks for having us on the show. Right, it's yeah. really great to be at this event. It's our first time here. Uh, so I'm Paul Howard, Senior Director for Business Development and uh, product development as well for Rogers Communications. So I have a team uh, that Jeffrey's part of that uh, works on industrial automation applications and, and mining's uh, certainly front and center in that business for us. And Jeffrey? only growing. And yeah. Only growing. Yeah. yeah. What about you, Jeffrey? Yeah, so I'm a senior manager of business development. Uh, and in my role, uh, really my focus is on uh, helping uh, different industry verticals um, with their communication needs. Uh, we're focused on uh, wireless private networks in, uh, and specifically we've uh, done a lot of work in, in the mining industry. Um, certainly, as you mentioned, you know, communications is something that's so important um, for everything to enable uh, technologies whether you want to bring in, you know, robotics and automate your mind, build the smart mind of the future, um, you need reliable and, uh, you know, communications to, to be able to do that. Is there, um, I want to get into a little bit, I want to actually talk a little bit about the scope of Rogers, because obviously anybody watching here in Canada knows the company, but we have people, you know, all, all over the world actually watching the show. So, um, I just was curious, though, uh, before we get into that, when it comes to scale, like you're talking about, uh, you know, robotics and automation, those are going to be fairly large scale mines. Are you also working with the smaller operators, too? Does, is it are you able to service, you know, in these remote areas with a small operator? Do you get into that or are you is the main focus on these big operators? <laughs> Yeah, I'll, uh, Jeffrey, I'll hand it over to you in a second. But I, I think the value that we bring to the table is it's um, it's a managed service that can scale up and scale right. down, right, Jeffrey? I mean, ultimately, there really isn't any limit um, on the upside, right? I mean, obviously, as a national operator, we can you know build networks as large as the country here in Canada. Mm -hmm. But it's fair to say that we're working with customers that are even smaller than many of the mine sites, right, Yeah, Jeffrey? absolutely. And and. The architecture of how we actually built our product uh, allows us to do that. We can scale horizontally, add more compute right at the edge. And, th and that's a really important part about how we deliver the service is the actual system itself um, can survive on its own without requiring any kind of backhaul or communications to any cloud infrastructure. We certainly can connect to those. Um, but, you know, reliability is yeah. key, and it, especially if you're doing tele remote operation or autonomous haulage, you need a network that's always available. As soon as you lose those communications, trucks stop moving. Mm -hmm. That's, uh, <laughs> you don't want that happening. The, I, I was wondering, do, is there still, I went, I was tearing down a mine, I don't know, 10 years ago or something. Um, and so we're pulling equipment out and that, and I remember we, uh, at night, we go out to the, the trucks, we'd have a little, I don't know, it's like a little link thing we put in a, I forget how we did it. But anyway, we had some sort of communication tech out there. I, in my mind, if I go out to a remote site, I'm still looking for that. It probably doesn't even exist anymore. Um, <laughs> it's, you'd, be, often, you'd be surprised. Or, yeah, or there's still, are people, um, are people up to date or are you really having to educate people a lot? Go, no, you, you actually can get this out on your site. Yeah, Jeffrey, I want you to jump on that one. Yeah, no, absolutely. I mean, without communications, I mean, there's, there's lots of technologies that you can use to, to enable, um, you know, communications to devices. Uh, but what we're seeing is that the systems today um, need ultra low latency uh, to be as close to real time as possible. Right, yeah. um, and certainly capacity. Um, the demand for bandwidth um, applications, you know, using things like video to actually um, analyze every frame of data uh, requires a huge, lot of bandwidth. Um, yeah. So yeah, we're we're seeing that uh, you just 
hungry for more bandwidth. Um, and, and that's where we can scale our network to actually accommodate that. Uh, and certainly with 5G technologies, uh, we j just have more, more capacity in the network. And uh, again, lower latency is, is so critical. Yeah. And I mean, you know, for mines in those remote areas, um, you know, they still have the challenge of getting connectivity to the site. They all want to use cloud applications just right. like, yeah, you know, you urban do. So you're going to see the same mix. There's still lots of satellite out there to yeah. get that remote backhaul. Lots of mines um, in the build phase when they're getting into operations are bringing the fiber in along with the power transmission lines, right. which uh, which can help. Um, you know, we can use any of that infrastructure that's in place um, to set up these systems on site, but you're still going to see the, the whole gamut depending where these things are. Obviously, in urban markets, yeah. we've got lots of fiber and lots of connectivity, but that's not always the case when you get up into some of the remote regions, right? Yeah. Alrighty, so we're going to take a moment to thank our sponsors. First up, we have OptiSize. OptiSize is a leading edge geophysical acquisition design and software company. OptiSize provides innovative seismic survey designs utilizing the latest field technology and optimizing for advanced processing and quantitative in interpretation techniques. OptiSize's mission is to bring sustainable exploration solutions to energy development with their custom land footprint reduction technology, EcoSize. EcoSize enables operators to focus on reducing their environmental and greenhouse gas footprint while imaging all their subsurface targets and reducing costs. You can visit them at OptiSize.com to learn more. Next up, we have Apex Automation. Looking to solve a problem, Apex Automation has a solution. Their proven track record has helped organizations streamline production and improve team morale by removing mundane tasks and lower operation costs and burdens. Robotics, advanced process control, and machine learning are examples of what Apex Automation can provide. Have an idea? Looking for a trusted consultant who can deliver? Contact Apex Automation today and start your team's automation journey. Visit them at apexautomation.ca to learn more. Next up, we have Micromine. As your mining projects accelerate, so should your technology. Micromine is a leading software provider to the global mining industry with solutions that support the entire life cycle from early exploration to advanced mine operation. Micromine enables explorers to prospect smarter, model faster, and estimate with greater confidence. They, they empower mining engineers to optimize strategic mine planning, streamline design, and schedule faster. Micromine's technology supports even the large just mines to gain greater operational control and boost performance. And of course, they provide mining teams with reliable data management solutions to enhance insights, compliance, and safeguard digital assets. To learn more on how Micromine's next generation technology can help you, you can visit them at micromine.com today. Next up, we have Fuller Bros. Fuller Brothers Inc. has over 59 years of tire industry experience as the world's leader in providing non-hazardous, non-toxic products that reduce tire management costs for a diverse range of customers. The acknowledged formula developers of the globally recognized tire life. Fuller Brothers also produces other quality products such as PSF Plus, PSF Lubes It, Tire Cream, Dripless Tire Paint, Omega Tire Repair System, as well as select tire service tools and tire painting equipment. For more information, you can visit them at fullerbros.com or by calling toll-free at 1-800-547-7785. Fuller Brothers, we have the inside covered. And last but not least, we have Savannah Equipment. Savannah Equipment supplies new and used mining equipment around the world from plaster to underground to ore processing plants. They have gold concentrating tables, trommels, and mineral jigs in stock now to take advantage of the high gold prices. Visit them at SavannahEquipment.com where you will find more equipment every day. Now let's get back to this interview. I wanted to kind of go, now I want to kind of step back into the bigger picture. Uh, and Paul, start with you is, is just that little bit of, I mean, Roger's kind of, they've got a lot of first to the market in the industry, um, which is, I mean, that's, that's just, uh, takes a company that has a certain tolerance for, for risk and a certain ability to know that they can communicate with a new, uh, customer base because every time you bring something new, yep. you know, half of people go, uh-uh, we don't want the new one. <laughs> um, can you talk a little bit about just some, just quickly, some of the first that Rogers has actually brought in? Yeah, we really, uh, it's a great question. We really pride ourselves on being the leader in innovating in wireless uh, within Canada. Certainly our founder, Ted, he brought wireless to Canada. He built the very first, you know, pre 1G in terms of technical standards to Canada uh, almost 40 years ago. And we have led in through all the phases in wireless 2G, 3G, 
4G now works and now 5G. We were the first to bring 5G to Canada. We now operate the largest uh, 5G network across Canada. And, you know, building these private networks for big mines and industrial, it's just an extension of that, right? We're really good at, you know, that leading edge. And, and you're right, it is, it is risky. And part of our value is we can take some of that risk out, right? We have the engineering labs. We have the talent all across Canada. And it's not just on the technology, Jared. We have the people that understand the regulatory environment. Uh, we have the people that know how to go get access to Spectrum. We have the largest Spectrum portfolio that we can bring. And you, know, you can't run these wireless networks without access to the airwaves. So it's not just the, the technology side. Um, because of our scale, because we're used to being out there first in the market, we have all the other sort of assets that we can bring to take some of that risk out for the customer. I'm, uh, I want to kind of go to the people for a sec, because you are a very large, large company and organization. Does that, does that sort of reverberate through, through the company? Is that sort of a culture, especially on that business development side? And both of you are sort of in that, that vein. So I was curious of sort of that messaging not so much outfacing, but internally. Yeah, definitely. We, um, you know, not only in wireless, I mean, we're also a long, uh, a very large wireline player. We're a media company, we're a sports company. Um, you know, we love to be first in every single one of those categories. Um, you know, my team specifically that Jeffrey's part of here, um, you know, we're at the, we're at the leading edge of that. So we use agile methodologies, the reason we call it business development is because people like Jeffrey actually go out. We speak to our clients years ahead and we find out what they're looking for. What are the types of features, the capabilities, the problems? So you're speaking directly with, like you're spending time directly with them. Then we build a product, yeah. right? And then, we, we, the, right? Yeah, when we, uh, when we, even before we started building our product, we spent about a year, the first year, just talking to just our talking. customers. It's, 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 a, it's a different approach than traditional carriers um, take, uh, but it was really important for us to get it right. The agile approach that we take, we know we're not going to get it right, but we were able to, you know, adapt to the needs of the market. Um, and, and it changes so rapidly that we have to have that agility in, in how we build our product. Yeah. I was going to ask about um, the, the labs. You, you quickly mentioned them, but I want to circle back. Um, what does that encompass? So it's a big investment. So we, you know, at the highest level, we've got significant investments within um, university research. So here locally where this show is, and it, um, is being broadcast out of Vancouver, um, we've got an investment at the University of British Columbia. We've got a 5G living lab. In fact, we did uh, work around autonomous haulage for mining right here in British Columbia um, with some of the leading researchers there. We've got the similar investment in Eastern Canada with University of Waterloo. And then we have our own facilities where we operate things like they're called Faraday cages, where you can turn radio signals on and not interfere down in the, you know, the bowels of our building, so right. to speak. Um, and we have specific labs just for these wireless private networks for industrial automation. Um, and it goes just beyond, you know, making sure the tech works together. We also layer on things that are really important. We haven't really talked about, but, you know, security is really important, right? Once you're starting to put all your data on top of that. So all of these things are tested yeah. uh, very, very thoroughly um, across multiple sites. And as Jeffrey mentioned, we look at this, you know, agile is a, product development methodology. Yeah. We actually reset every 90 days what we're going to go develop and look at. So we might run into something at this show here, Jeffrey and I. I have a whole nother team you're not meeting here today that actually goes and sort of builds the product and, and works with some of our great partners. Um, we could hear something interesting here today in our next 90 day increment, Jeffrey and I can put that on the on the dashboard and say this is something we actually want now. Right. It's turned out this is more important for our customers. So that's how fast when we say that we're adapting and innovating, it's literally every 90 days to make wow. sure that we're hitting what the market is looking for at the right time. Well, wow. what, uh, uh, Jeffrey, can we go into a little bit? You, I, I know you touched on it um, already, but I see some things like uh, I got in my notes here. I see these terminologies like self-serve portal and that. Can you talk a little bit about specific um, services to the mining industry? Yeah, absolutely. And you know, specific to the self-service portal, as I mentioned earlier, you know, we really went out to industry and, and understood what, what they needed. Uh, and one of the things that came across, even across multiple verticals, not just mining, the energy sector, retail, uh, logistics, they had 
you know, a common theme. They wanted an, a user experience that allowed them to actually control the elements of the network. So when you think of, you know, a 4G, 5G network, the traditional way of doing it was if you needed any changes to be made, you'd have to call, you know, Rogers, um, you know, and, and you didn't have that ability to, to self-serve, um, you know, doing things like assigning IP addresses to your devices, uh, you know, static addresses, dynamic, being able to keep that same IP address as your device moved from, we have the ability to move outside of the mine, sorry, move outside the mine and actually, um, you know, go from, one mine site to another. So if you have assets that are moving around, you maintain that security, but you also maintain that, you know, common um, connection to that device. So it's a bilateral connection to the, to, to every one of your assets. Um, so yeah, it, it really is um, built for enterprise for it. We use common, you know, terminology in our product, as opposed to using very, carrier specific telecom specific acronyms um, and technologies we actually design it for an enterprise world which is really the focus and and the customers that we're yeah we're servicing you gotta remember jared these these are clients particularly in the mining industry that are really far away in a lot of cases from it's not unusual to be eight, nine, 10 hours away from the closest urban market, yeah. they need to be able to self-serve. They need to be able right. to deal with themselves. And they're used to that with some of those legacy technologies. And they want to make sure <clears throat> that when they transition to modern technologies like 4 and 5G networks, they have the same ability for their staff on site right. to kind of make some changes. Now, we button down the important things in the background to make sure you don't shut the network down. Uh, but we let, we let those customers do those moves, ads, and changes on the fly. They can, they can log in and order more SIM cards that you would need for a mobile network without calling us. So, so it's the right blend. We're there, we're there in the background, making sure that everything is, stays functional, but they get to integrate it with their operational. So it's really important to have that self-service experience when you're when you're addressing this industry because we can't always be on site right <laughs> right it's yeah. uh, it's just too far away um i, I want to kind of take another step over to some of this first like this and here comes here comes the layman question i always have at least a couple in a show you've got a, a five a 5g system then you mentioned when they're laying or, or well i think you mentioned it when you're they're laying the um the lines down no, I'm throwing yeah, the, 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 power, the, the power transmission, yeah. they should and use then they're all, so the all the fiber usually. Yeah. Are those two connected? Like bringing in the 5G network, I think Rogers was first for that as well. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So is, is that all tied together or am it, I two completely different technologies? No. Unpack how confused here, here, Sure. <laughs> here's, where they're, here's where they're related um, is that obviously there's mining operations that are very local and we can build networks that function on a mine independent of the outside world, uh, which I think is a big part of our, our value props. Jeffrey. Absolutely. That'd be the 5G yeah. tower. Those are the things that you can put up as towers right. or mount them on buildings, but where all of these uh, great technologies that we're seeing at this show, they all need to talk to the outside world. Usually they need to go to right. one of the big cloud providers. That's where that fiber comes in. You really right. need that backhaul. They call it, they need that fiber optics to get to the internet so you can get to these big cloud providers so you can work on that AI application, uh, do that remote pilot uh, perhaps. So, so they're related, they're very complementary, but we can do the networks very standalone, very local. Um, but we're seeing that almost in every instance, the customer actually needs that good large bandwidth pipe that gets to the site um, in order to take advantage of where they want to be in the future. Yeah. So the, 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 the 5G is your basically like wireless cell connectivity. And then the fiber is your- How you internet. get off the yeah. site, get right, you the exactly. internet basically. Yeah. One thing we didn't uh, mention, we talked about power earlier. Um, one of the big challenges is you don't have power everywhere. There isn't transmission lines everywhere. So we've actually built out um, the ability to use off-grid power um, using things like solar and wind to actually power a cell site, um, which we're actually doing a, you know, a 180 kilometer stretch from uh, the town of Cochrane to an actual mine site. Oh, yeah. We're actually building, you know, for safety reasons, because you get in your vehicle to go to the mine site, uh, you know, 200 kilometers without any method of communication. 
That's it. Yeah. Yeah. And we can tie those two networks, the private and, yeah. and the public network together. Right. Uh, but yeah, we're pretty excited about uh, the ability. Uh, you know, we're even looking into doing things like hydrogen power to, to power these, uh, yeah. these well, towers. 10 people you should talk to then. <laughs> <laughs> well, there, I mean, a, a lot of people in the, in this industry are really looking to make sure they have carbon offsets. Yeah. Um, so it's important from that safety aspect, but there's actually a twofold hit being able to use wind and solar for some of these cell sites and that you can, you can show how you're trying to be more complementary to the environment. Yeah. Right. Now, are you doing those <clears throat> partnerships or are you, is that a direct investment by Rogers, the, these power sources? There, well, it, it, we certainly led the innovation. Yeah. Um, the actual solution, of course, is delivered by partners. We don't right. manufacture solar panels and we don't make the wind turbines. Uh, but the solution is pulled together by Rogers. And I think as far as we know, we're the only operator that's actually using this type of technology right now, so. right? And we've actually done some out here. Um, there's a highway famous for the wrong reasons called the Highway of Tears, where there yeah. was big blanks in coverage. We've deployed the same technology along the Highway of Tears where there was no power, uh, which is why we couldn't have cell sites. We're now able to fill in some of those gaps. Right. Um, actually taking the technology we developed for the mining industry, believe it or not. Wow. Um, I, I guess to wrap up the inter interview, I want to circle back to something you mentioned that you might hear something here. And, and I want to talk, is that how, I know you've kind of touched on it, but I want to wrap up with it, that how key is it, how many of the ideas, obviously not an exact number, but how many of the ideas are from that year of talking that, you know, even we have it on our little show. We, we have an approach. We think the conversation is going to be about one thing. Then we talk to the guests and realize, oh, they've got a whole other thing that we should be talking about. <laughs> it happens all the time. So does that same thing happen that you go into, you're thinking, okay, these are the products that are going to really, the market's going to love this. Oh, no, no, this is what they're after. I can tell you in my career, you know, I've developed lots of products, Jared, but it's why I use the agile methodology. It's why my team uniquely has business development going out. Uh, and, and, you know, Jeffrey, you're, you know, you're great at talking to customers, but Jeffrey will be a bit humble on uh, his background that like he has the industry expertise. So the people on my team are comfortable going on to a mine site. They're comfortable going to an industrial site. In fact, my whole team is, um, NORCAT certified to be in an underground mine. Oh, my whole I team see. went and we have the credentials to be on these heavy sites. So yeah, we're, um, <laughs> we're, we're a little ahead of the curve. So from a product site all the time is the short answer that yeah. things change. You know, you can spend two years building something and find out it's not what the market's looking for. Um, and, and actually this power thing we're talking about is a good example. We, we, we went into that customer not even realizing we needed, we needed off-grid power. Mm -hmm. We were already basically past the contract stage to do the private network. Really? Wow. And they brought this to us and we had to introduce that. Basically, like I said, in the next 90 days, we drop it into the increment. We packaged it together. We did an RFP, found the partners, uh, and that's being stood up now. Um, so it's always on the fly. I don't know. There's, there's got to be tons of other things. Push to talk, Jeffrey. Bring that. Like we had no idea about that. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, um, and, and thanks for the compliments there, Paul. But uh, every time I meet a customer, I realize, um, you know, how little I know of the industry. It, it's a learning experience. Every, my life doing this show. <laughs> yeah, every interaction is is absolutely a learning experience. So you know, the agile ability for us to adapt and, and sometimes completely shift direction because we we assumed that, uh, you know, the industry was going this way or they yeah. needed this type of technology and, and we need to pivot. Uh, but, you know, as you mentioned, Paul, um, you know, uh, Push to Talk is uh, a solution that we've developed as part of our private network capabilities. Uh, and we actually are working now to actually integrate um, what's known as mission critical push to talk. And really that allows us to have coordination with the, the private network and prioritize certain communications over other communications, you know, real time again, and this is all about real time voice, uh, something unique about our capabilities in, in, um, in our mission critical push to talk solution is it's not just about, you know, uh, walkie talkie like, uh, communications, our system has built into it, you know, man down capabilities. Right. Um, we have, you can see on, on your mobile device in real time, 
where all your workers, where all your miners are in real time, they can hit a panic button if they get in trouble. Um, You know, if there's, there is an actual man down, you know, the mobile device can actually detect those things and and send, uh, you know, help. It has video capability. So you can, you know, much like police officers have, um, if you want to have remote um, hands, uh, as we call it, you may have someone that's in the field that doesn't, have the expertise on yeah. how to repair uh, some machinery. Well, you can have someone thousands of kilometers away that can see through the video and, and the audio and, and talk someone through repairing a piece of equipment as an example. Yeah. So that, I mean, push a talk is a classic example. So Jeffrey just sort of covered the whole gamut, but when we went out to mines, it was about machine to machine autonomous haulage is a big buzzword where yeah. they want that connectivity. We learned to our surprise, they're actually across multiple industries, that just replacing the old walkie-talkie was the most important thing. It was all it was all about safety, right? They yeah. really wanted people, and they wanted to get away from a device where you couldn't put apps on it. Like so, with a right. four yeah. or five G network, you get away from the sort of the walkie-talkie mode. Yeah. Now you can use an iPhone, you can use an Android phone. Yeah. Um, you do the same thing, but now you can put your productivity apps. You can put your checklist for safety. Yeah. You can. Uh, do all that location tracking, asset tracking. Yeah. Those are actually the things that really came out front and center when we yeah. got out in front of the customers that we weren't expecting in the marketplace. Yeah. yeah. I, I will say just to wrap up this interview, it's one of the things that I like about doing this show. And I think we're all, all guilty of it. You see a big company, a big brand, and it's, it's the company. That's one of the nice things about this show is that you get to actually talk to people <laughs> it, and, and show who's behind it. You're talking about going around looking for ideas here and how they got implemented and, you know, bringing, using wind energy and all these, and that process and all that sort of thing. Um, so I, I just want to thank you for actually coming on and having a, a real conversation, walking us through the technology, walking us through what the company's approach is. It, it's great to do. Yeah, this has been great. Really, uh, really pleased you invited to the show and uh, we'd be happy to come back at the next event. I hope so. A real <laughs> pleasure. Thank okay. you very much. Thank all right. Both. Have a great show. Okay, everyone, that is the uh, wait, third episode. Wow, I'm already losing my spot. Um, thank you for watching. Uh, make sure we'll have plenty of links to Rogers Communications. Keep watching, keep suggesting guests. We will see you on the next episode live from CIMB.